Right, folks, okay. There you go. Christy, Christy, Christy. Okay. Right. Um, right, okay. What I think one point is now is that we have to understand that we've been basically taught by religion, we've been taught by the church, that your relationship with God is really up to you. It's up to you to reach that height. Basically, the same as the Jewish people, basically, we're trying to do. And religion has taught us the same thing. It's not up to us at all. It's just up to us to submit and to accept and to desire to come into that. And God basically says, whoopee. <laughs> Come on in, let's go for a ride, basically. <laughs> yeah. And then everything is really about him. Yeah, we just need to be willing to walk in it. What, what he's done. I did a video recently talking about the fact that uh, certainly don't buy a spiny castle. The wind can be quite bad. So when you're trying to do a video, it's very noisy. And I said about the fact that God had told me just take it to, sh to quiet down. And I said, well, it's not as simple as that, is it? It's about your faith. <laughs> wrong. Never realized I was wrong. It's not about your faith. You're his child. You've now got God in you. So, yes, Holy Spirit comes in, so therefore we are one, so therefore all three come in. You are basically... When you step out of faith, you're stepping out of faith as a child of God. So it's not about your faith. You've inherited His. When you become a new creation, you became like Him. So everything He has, He's given to you, including His faith. Right? So we've got to learn to operate in that. We've got to learn. I know it blows your mind, doesn't it? It's like, really? What? What? Really? So that's where you got to look at scripture. When the Lord told the waves to calm, what did they do? They calmed. They didn't say, excuse me, who do you think you're talking to? <laughs> they just calmed. That same authority is in us. Because that's the point. Faith. If you, learn, if you understand faith, you need to learn about the authority you have. If you have the authority to tell a disease to leave, and it will leave. To tell a demon to leave, and it will leave. To tell the seas to calm and it will calm. Then it's not about stepping out of faith anymore. It's about walking in that which is God, that God has put in you. Because you have everything He had. When you become a new creation in Him, then that's what you become. You're supposed to be that. So if you're walking according to heaven, you're walking according to his will, his ways. His will is that you have the same authority that he had. The Lord said, the works I've done are nothing compared to the works they're going to do. But how are we going to do that if we have less authority? How are we going to do that if we have to build our faith? See, I said that, I was wrong. Right? Build your relationship, not your faith. If you build your relationship, your faith incre increases. Because you get his faith, not yours. Right? <sighs> Every time I'm doing the video now, I'm saying I was wrong. I was never trying to mislead people, but this is why I've said, you know, the church ministers, you've got to understand, they weren't trying to mislead people. They believed what they were saying. Same as I always have. I was never trying to say to people, oh, this is the way when it wasn't. Yeah, I believed it was. Yeah. But that's the point. Yeah, you know, for babies, absolute baby Christians, then, yeah, because when the Lord is talking about if your faith is the size of, size of a mustard seed, you're talking about an incredibly baby Christian, aren't you, really? An infant. An absolute infant. We who are supposed to be adult Christians, you know, like me, 27 years old, we should be operating on something different to that now. 
But the problem is we, we stayed there. Because the whole point about that, so it's based upon religion to say you've got to do this, you've got to do that, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. That isn't God. God is basically the same. Look, when the Lord said it's finished, he meant it. The problem is we've assumed he meant that his job on the cross paying for our sins, when he said it's finished, he meant that. No more. Does it say anywhere that he meant that and no more? It says he took upon himself our sins and our shame and our guilt and our pain, all of that. Yes, 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 it says that, yeah. Does it say that when he said it's finished that that's all he was referring to? So you've got to understand also the, um, the disciples. We raise them up to such heights. Idiots, aren't we, really? They were just babies. Oh, they were. When they were walking with the Lord, they were just babies. Because they weren't having to be led and guided by the Holy Spirit. And even when they were, they had an experience of walking with the Lord, so therefore listening to him. When the Holy Spirit is saying the same thing, of course they're going to trust that, because they've heard it from him. We, on the other hand, didn't have that. So if we're able to get to a reasonable level, then we certainly shouldn't be lifting those people up to a high level. Should we? God used them to build the church. Cool. So what's God going to use us to do? Are we lower than them? No. No. Definitely not. We're definitely not lower than them. I mean, I mentioned Wigglesworth earlier. Now, Wigglesworth was definitely walking according to all of that. The things that Wigglesworth did, you know, the things that he was, certainly when people talk about him, the things that they say he did was just incredible. He just, he was just a man of very simple ways, but he knew who he was. He knew this, and this was like in the 1930s. He was way advanced compared to most believers. That's why he helped set up the Pentecostal church. Because in most churches, they weren't doing any of that at all. Now look at the Pentecostal church. Are they doing anything like what he did? Nope. They backslidden quite a lot, haven't they? Really, they have. Yeah? Pentecostal churches should be so more advanced now you know, than any other church, because they were then. The other churches haven't really come up, have they? Not particularly. But, again, have they intentionally done that? No. No, of course not. No. It's just been the way it's gone, you know. It's the way it is and it's where they are and we, we've got to move forward. We've got to understand that, okay, that's the situation, okay? As I said in the last video, I need to get from God. How can I help other people to understand? You know? How can I help other people to receive this? I don't know. Well, like that uh, song, God is with us. Whoa! <laughs> I tell you, that song, wow. In about the first few lyrics, it says, when heaven and earth came face to face. I'm telling you now, folks, that's what's going to be happening pretty soon. When people start to realise who they are, who God is and who they are is this new creation. Whoa. You're going to have heaven and earth coming face to face. It won't be the Lord coming back, but it'll be him working through his people. And his people looking very much like him. 
not in image, but in the way they are. In what they do, the way they are, the way they represent themselves. Because they're representing him. And there will be a close likeness to him. So heaven will be operating on earth in the form of these people. So we're going to see that again. And it says in those lyrics, the earth was forever changed. Well, don't we need change again? No? Yeah. Also in that song, I've said before, I've seen that image in a big arena where the last boom, that for God is risen, and then boom. There's three booms in that. Three booms in that song. Wow. Every time they, they sort of sing it and they're, they're quietly for God is risen, and suddenly boom. <laughs> and then they go into the proper course. Wow. The thing about that is, is that now, what I've seen now, is the Holy Spirit going over the audience three times. The first time, listen to the song. The first time the boom and the chorus, or lean up to the chorus, is pretty quiet. You're only having the chorus, the one, for God is risen. You know, sang with oomph. Second time, a bit more. Third time, the boom is far bigger. That's going to be what the Holy Spirit's going to be doing. The first time it'll be something quite light. The people will feel it, but they won't necessarily go down. Second time, some of them will go down, but not all of them. The third time, even the ones that went down, they might have started getting up again, and then there's going to be a third hit of the Holy Spirit. And it's going to knock everybody down. Those that are getting back up again, straight back down again. <laughs> That's going to be awesome. Wow. That's going to be absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Just beautiful. Yeah. One of the group for King and Country, when they play that at um, stadiums and stuff, the Holy Spirit is probably going to do the same thing. You know, they need to be aware of that fact, that the Holy Spirit is going to do that to that song. Certainly if they believe that, if they, if they can see it, it's going to happen. Right. It's the point, if you can see it, you can walk in it. So, can you see God's faith? Can you see the faith of God, that when you come across a situation, it doesn't matter. Your faith is a human being. Do you need to understand this? No. You need to know that, you know, you've got this, you've done this before, you've got it. No. You need to know he's done it before, he's got it, he understands it. So the authority that you are coming by is his. You don't need to understand it, he understands it. You don't need to have had the experience, he has. If he's using you as his vessel, it's still him doing it. He's just doing it through you. Right? So if, him is, if it's him doing it through you, then it's based upon his faith, not yours. Based upon his power, not yours. Based upon his authority, not yours. Based upon his will, his ways, not yours. Because he's doing it. Right? And my mind is already blown by that. That is just incredible. Yeah. That's the point. You, you've got to understand. Now, I put it, you know, um, I think the book's called uh, Chris Blakely, something like that. Um, He's done videos about this in 2013. 2013 was when I first came to Scotland. And God first told me I've been fighting depression since childhood. Could I have done with this understanding? Yeah. 
<laughs> didn't have it. Got it now. There you go. Um, he's talked about this stuff years ago. I've just... Rob basically told me the title of his video, so I looked it up. Um, whenever I see anything, I have to go to God and question it and go, okay, is this the case? Now, the majority of what you're saying is true. Exactly, you know, has he got everything right? No, he wouldn't have done. Right, the reason why he wouldn't have done it is because he's human. He would have got some things wrong. That's why everything with everything, check with God. Now, I could be wrong in the sense that God's doing it, not you. It could be you doing it. You know, I've not come to that understanding yet. So I'm still on the understanding that God is using you as a vessel God's doing it. That's why it's based on his... Because it doesn't make sense. How can it be his authority, his power? This chap says it in a way that does sort of make sense, but I'm not there yet. He says, because you're a new creation, because you died with Christ, you were risen with Christ into heavenly places. Got that. Understand that. Biblical. Yes. Fine. Christy. But he then says, you were made... Basically, not exactly as Christ, not in the, the authority that he is, but basically like uh, three quarters, a bit more than that, say uh, seven eighths Christ. Now, I, I'm not sure about that. Although I understand what you're saying and it does make sense to a certain degree. Yeah, renewal of your mind, that sort of stuff. New creation, old man dies. Yeah? Hmm? It does make sense. You know, you were raised in the image of Christ. Yeah, all well, that makes sense. There are other scriptures. John, uh, 1 John 4 talks about it. Um, and there's a lot of scriptures that talk about that sort of stuff. That we're supposed to be you know, having the righteousness of Christ and... Yeah, so therefore, yeah, I sort of see it, but not quite. So I'm just going with <laughs> yeah, that for now. But it certainly is a huge step away from where I was before. It certainly is a huge advancement, yeah, far deeper than where I was before. So, all right, it's a step. Yeah, have I taken the all the steps I should have taken that way? Maybe not yet. Well, certainly, there's deeper to go, a lot deeper to go. Um, so, hmm. but put it this way, certainly all of our struggles, all of our burdens, all the things we've taken upon ourselves, and all the things we, we've got to step out in faith, we've got to do this, and it's, yeah. No. No, that's the point, that isn't true. Not at all. That just isn't true. We've got to understand who we are. We've got to understand that based on who we are, it's his faith, his authority, his power, his will, his ways, his understanding. Now, the more you go into relationship, the more you understand his understanding, the more you understand his wills, his ways, well, you understand his authority and how to walk in it. But that's why the glory always goes to God. Because I think it is always his authority, it's always him doing it, but he's just doing it through us. Like Christ is in us, Christ is leading us and guiding us. So he's working through us. But it's him working through us. So it's not me. If someone gets healed, it's nothing to do with me really. I've just been a vessel that God's using. I still believe that, and I don't believe that that, that could be any different to that. Otherwise, the glory comes to me, doesn't it? And, look, I'm one of these people who I don't really like praise and stuff like that. I don't feel comfortable with it. Um, but when I'm talking about proper glory, whether I like praise or not, that has to always go to God. Always go to God. You can't 
be given that to any human being. Not in any way, shape or form. You've got to always give that to God. It's His. Because people need to focus on him. They need to give their life to him. Not to me. But understanding, certainly understanding, that it's not based on your faith. It's not based on your understanding. It's not based on your authority. It's not based on your power or your knowledge. Because I'll tell you what, if it was, I'm never going to get anywhere. I'm never going to rise to anything. It's based upon, I mean, I've got a fairly decent degree of knowledge and understanding, fairly decent. But fairly decent is not going to do the job, is it really? Not it's based on that. But it's not. In my faith, you know, I'm, I've got a certain degree of faith. But again, it's not based on my faith. It's based on his so when he spoke and said, let there be light, he didn't question it. He knew what would happen. He knew as soon as he said, let there be light, there would be light. Yeah. He knew that his word had that authority. And that's the thing. In the end, when God gives you something to say, or God puts you in a situation to pray for someone, again, seek God. Seek God for the words you're supposed to use, because his words will not come back unfulfilled. Right? So when you want to pray for someone, definitely seek God. Or when God wants you to pray for someone, seek God, ask him for the words you should use. Because we know, he knows, we know, that when he says something, that's going to happen. So when he gives you the words to say, and you say that, that's going to happen. It's not based upon our faith, it's not based upon our authority, it's based upon his. That is awesome. Let's say, have I ironed out all the creases? No. 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 It's not up to me necessarily to iron out all the creases, is it, really? No, nope. it's up to me to just give it as I feel God's telling me to give. Now, will my understanding of that improve over time? Yeah. Yeah. I'll be doing more videos on this subject, I imagine, in a few weeks' time, once my understanding is increased. Yeah. One second, got a person here. I got to say hello to Doggy again. That's brilliant. That's nice. Even when I got my dogs, they always go and say hello to any other dog. Always. <laughs> I'm definitely a doggy person. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. I'll put it this way. Yeah, it's it's just when you think about it from the point of view that of that, it's no longer down to you really in any way, shape or form. Yeah, you just come in and when the Lord knocks, you open, you let him in. And it's all based upon, do you believe? But then, learn who God is, learn who you are. Once you learn that, you know, that opens everything up. Everything just gets opened up. It's incredible. It's not the point that you don't have to wait until you understand. The fact that you ask God to help you to understand that, he starts to open the door. And when he starts to open the door, you start to see things you never imagined. <laughs> you start to understand things in ways you never imagined you could. It's just incredible. You don't need to come to the point of fully understanding who God is and who you are. If you've got a real desire for that, and of course, you know, it's going to take a, a real desire because of the fact that you don't have to do anything. 
You don't, but God knows your heart. If you're not, if you don't mean it, God's not going to bother with that, is he? Really? You're not ready. Yeah, if your heart isn't in it, then God knows that, and you're not ready. So therefore, you're not going to see it. So I'm not going to pretend that everyone who asks God for that is going to see it, because you know God knows whether you're ready or not. I wasn't ready, so God got me ready. Right? Why? I don't know. I've no idea. I've no idea. Is it important for me to be ready? Maybe if, to help other people to get ready? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. If that's the case, it would be an absolute honour to do that. Oh, absolutely. It would be a real pleasure to be able to help other people to do that, to come to that understanding. Yeah? Well, as I say, then it's the case of sending people out. You know, go and bring in those who are in need. Yeah. Yeah. As I say, in the end, it's up to God to do whatever God wants to do, isn't it, really? Yeah. And use whoever he wants to use. I mean, basically, to a certain degree, I was right the other day when I said about um, what I now believe my calling is, but I didn't quite understand just how much it wasn't really reliant upon me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How much it was all down to God. God basically said, I've already done it. You just have to walk in it. Okay. Lord, you can see I can walk fairly well, so if all I have to do is walk in it, I'm capable of walking, so, okay, go for it then, <laughs> leave me and guide me to walk in it, yeah, help me to grow in my understanding of you and of me, of who I'm, you know, as this new creation, I mean, my journey with this started 20 odd years ago, I started asking questions then, well, when I first became a Christian, I never accepted things as they were. I was asking questions then, it didn't make sense. Yeah. So, right. it's taken a while, you know, to get some good answers. <laughs> there you go. As I said, you know, didn't I think I had the answers? Yeah, did I have the answers? No. I thought I did, but I didn't. All right. <laughs> How foolish we can be, eh? We think we've got the answers, but clearly we haven't. Look. Just trying to wipe my feet a bit, because obviously it's been a bit mucky this path. I'm going to wipe my feet a bit. You know, it's not so mucky when I get indoors. This school's finished ages ago. It seems we're just walking home now. Okay. So as I say, what tomorrow will bring, I do not know. The day has been interesting, definitely. But getting up at 20 past four, I don't really want to continue that. I'd rather sleep a bit longer, really. But as I say, I did go to bed about probably half past nine, which was way early for me, way early, at least three hours early. So getting up three hours earlier, eh, yeah. So if I'd have gone to bed about half twelve, I'd have got up about half seven, so... Half seven wouldn't have been too bad, wouldn't it, really? Yeah. So, yeah. Tonight I'll be going a bit, 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 a bit later because I'm going to the gym. What I'm going to do there, I do not know. I've no idea at all. Yeah. Time will tell, won't it? Really? Yes, indeed. So, there you go. You take care, God bless. Going back to the car now. Go home and figure out what I'm doing. You have a good day. Bye-bye.